<laughs> As we mentioned at the start of the show, uh, we want you to try something very special, actually. With your help, we want to find our own exoplanets. And to tell us about that, we have Professor Chris Lintot. Oh, who's now known? Professor Clint Liftoff. Thanks, Brian. Clint yes. Liftoff. Well, whatever Liftoff's you want to call name, me is fine, as long as we find a planet. <laughs> well, how are we going to do that? Well, what we've got is fresh data from NASA's Kepler telescope, which is a telescope up in space that has quite a boring job, really. It stares at the same patch of sky for three months, and it records the brightness of 20,000 stars. We've taken that data, we've put it on a website called exoplanetexplorers.org, and if your viewers go there right now, they'll be amongst the first in the world to look at that data and help us sift through it to try and find planets around I, I other just, stars. I just say that I, I, this is what I really love, because it is real science in the sense mm. that you'll be looking at something that nobody has ever seen. That's right. Yeah, this is data that came down through Canberra just a week or so ago. It's been processed and put up online. Um, but we're going to need help to look for it. What we're looking for is not a picture of the planet. You can't see these planets because they're too close to their stars. Mm. What you're looking for instead is the blink in the data. So as the planet goes round the star, when it gets in front of the star, we see that star mm -hmm. fade. Yeah. And so we put the data up. If you have a look at it, you can see that. So there's an animation of this that yeah. we can show you. It, it shows a planet. Here we are, here's the, here's the star and the planet going in front of it there. But what you see is that graph at the bottom. And that's a very exciting graph because it's that blink that reveals the presence of the planet. Yeah. Uh, and you get the size of the planet, so you can tell how big it is. is. It? We can distinguish a rocky planet from one like a gas giant uh, and, and tell you all about these worlds that we hope to discover. Simple idea. Now, how do people physically get involved? How do they actually get to that information? Well, they could just go to the website, which is exoplanetexplorers.org or the ABC website. There's a little tutorial, take you maybe 30 seconds to read, and then you're in and you're looking for data. So you've got We've an example We've got some real there. data. Yeah, so, so this, this is, is real data that we can put up here. I hope. Yeah. So what you're seeing is each... will be there in a minute. Yeah, so when oh, it gets yeah. there. So each dot is... This is data from one star. Each dot is a measurement of brightness. You see it goes up and it goes down, and mostly that's because of noise in the camera or because the star is wobbling a bit. Yeah. But I don't know if you can see, Brian, or, or Julia, there are a couple of dips in there. Mm. At least two, uh, very the middle. Yeah, there's two there. That's actually... Those are signs of planets, and this is from oh, a famous geez. system. Yeah, it's this one, isn't it? Yeah, it's the Trappist system. So this is uh, a seven-planet system with seven planets Imagine crammed that. around its star, and actually that's in the part of the sky that Kepler's just been looking at. So this is hidden in our data set as well. Right, so some, some view viewers will find that, which has already been discovered. That's right. I should say on that system, if you go back to that graphic, three of those planets are particularly interesting, aren't they, in terms of the possible search for life? That's right. They're in this, this sort of habitable zone. They're actually all very close to the main planet. They're closer than Mercury is to the sun, but the yeah. star is a dwarf star, so you can be very close and yet uh, still be nicely habitable. Yeah. So maybe we'll find places we could visit or places we could study. That's a place you can go on holiday. Trappist. Yes, Trappist. that's right. 3B or yeah, something like that. 1B, yeah, one na B. named after the Belgian beer as well. So <laughs> yeah. perfect holiday destination. Well, now people know what to do to get involved, but you've got to go off, don't you, Chris? Yep, sure. You've got go work look to at the do. Data. Yep. Okay, I'll go and get work done. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Now, 